You say at the end of each prayer, Amen. And somebody told you some lie that it means so be it. It never meant so be it and it still doesn't mean so be it. Amen was the god of the north in Egypt. Ra, symbolized by the sun, was the god in the south. And when Egypt unified herself, they combined the god of the north and the god of the south into the one and thus Amen Ra. A-M-E-N hyphen R-A. Amen, Ra. That's interesting. Did you, you know his first name was Amen? That's why you say Amen when you end your prayers, because it's uh, you're saying, well, so be it. It doesn't mean that. Amen is the name of the Egyptian sun god, and it's an homage to the god Amen. Uh, and in the great temples of Egypt, they would always uh, chant out Amen, Amen, Amen. And in fact, in Jesus calls himself the Amen in Revelation 3 something, 3.16, I believe it is, in which he then identifies himself as the Egyptian sun god. And you're going to say, oh, hey, come on, now you've gone too far. Jesus wasn't the Egyptian sun god. Matthew 2 says, Mary and Joseph took the child Jesus to Egypt to fulfill the prophecy out of Egypt. Have I called my son? Hmm. Once you begin to understand religion, where it comes from, the whole story of Jesus is nothing more than a metaphor. There was no Jesus, there was no Abraham, no Isaac, no Jacob, there was no Moses, no King Solomon. None of those people in the Bible ever lived. These are metaphors for something far deeper. Now, black people are ticklish on this because black people think that everything in the Bible is true. I question the intelligence of anyone who thinks everything in the Bible is true or supposed to be true. <laughs> It's allegory, told, stories told to illustrate a point at a time when there were very few people reading books. And most of what you went into the making of the Bible was copied from Egyptian texts. Now, if you want to get so dewy-eyed over the Bible, which is, which is a carbon copy of a carbon copy, why don't you go back and read the original Egyptian text? Where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4,100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception, gave birth to her son Horus by a virgin birth. Dr. Uh, John G. Jackson and his book, Christianity Before Christ, tells us, and even Church Ward tells us. Now, let's look at Horus. Horus had two mothers, Isis, the virgin who conceived him, Nephetite, who nursed him. He was brought forth singly as one of the five brothers. Let's look at the life of Jesus. Jesus had two mothers, Mary uh, the virgin who conceived him, and Mary the wife of Cleophas who brought him forth as one of her children. Horus was the son of Seth, his father on earth. Jesus was the son of Joseph, his father on earth. Let's look at Horus now. Horus was with his mother, the virgin, until 12 years old when he was transformed into the beloved son, the God as the only begotten of the Father in heaven. Jesus remain with the mother, the virgin, up until the age of 12 when wow. he left her to be about his father's business. From 12 to 30 years of age, there is no record in the life of Horus. From 12 to 30 years of age, there is no record in the life of Jesus. <laughs> and Horus at 30 years of age became adult in his baptism by Newt. Jesus at 30 years of age was made a man in his baptism by John the Baptist. Horus in his baptism uh, made his transformation into the beloved son, the only begotten of the Father, the Holy Spirit, represented by a bird. Jesus in his baptism is hailed from heaven as the beloved Son and the only begotten of the Father, the God, the Holy Spirit, that is represented by a dove. You can jump up and down in church all day and say, Jesus is coming. And the wise will say it from where? And you'll be insulted and you'll call that blasphemy because they have the audacity to ask you from where? Like I don't have a right to know. And when did he go? And how did he go? And who went with him? And is he coming back alone? And if he's not, who's driving? Is he flying or is he floating? Is he going to be born or just go poop? And if you start using your mind that way, they call you a bad person. You know why? Because they have everybody here conditioned. They have us all trained like animals. It's called conformity. If we don't conform to their system of thinking, and their, and their definitions of words, then we are bad people. Proof 
Give me some documents, not some stuff that you wrote. You've been, been taught the fake stuff and you praying against yourself. In the brain you have three major glands. Pineal, pituitary, and I think it's hypothalamus or one of them. Thalamus or whatever. Hmm? Thalamus. Three major glands. Jesus is born in a stable, which means that the, that, that the Christ is born in a stable, which means the Christ is down here in the lower intestinal region, right in the, uh, up under the lower intestinal region in the root chakra. The men, uh, it's in the root chakra. It's a little small seed. That's who you are. Born in a stable up under the shit. It rises. When he's born, he's met by three wise men. Pineal, pituitary, hypothalamus, or whatever. Thalamus. Three wise men. Pineal, pituitary, thalamus. Three stars in Orion's belt. Three pyramids in Kemet. Three crosses on Calvary. Jubilee, jubilee, jubileum. But it's talking about the three glands in the head. Lucifer, light bringer, which means the pineal gland. Lucifer fell like the morning star or the morning sun. Then you get the revelations. Jesus said, I am the damn morning sun. Stay away from the dark side. Go to Isaiah 45 and it says, I will give you the treasures of darkness, which is melanin. The dark side. Now, what is the dark side? The dark side is the study of alchemy. The alchemical black. Al. Sun, S-U-N-S-O-N, Kimmy, Cam, black. Black land, black sun, alchemy, black God. The fallen ones, the fallen gods, Lucifer, the fallen gods. What it means by fallen? You were once in the spiritual realm. Then the vibration slowed down and you gradually took on a physical body. You are the damn fallen gods. You are the Titan, the Titans. The word hell comes from the word hyo. Hyo means physical earth. Hylix, physical people, physical body. You live in hell. It means the physical realm. Satan, cherub, means God in the physical. The only difference between you and the most high of the so-called gods that you, that, you, that you worship is that you got on a physical body and they don't. And the only thing that separates you is you the same energy, they just don't have the physical body. And your, your, your God is on the inside. The word El, Elohim, sun, star. The word Eve, beginning, Eve, El, evil, beginning star, beginning sun, original star, Eve, El. All of these particular terminologies, let's go on. As a matter of fact, even in our culture, Tetragrammaton yeah. actually deals with the four gates and the four elements. And yet Tetragrammaton is presented to people who don't understand it as the ineffable word or four-letter word. You know, Y-H-W-H, and then those who don't understand the science just say Yahweh, you know, right. and then those who don't understand that say Jehovah. And, is, and yet those same people will turn around and condemn cosmology, which is actually the foundation of all religions on the planet. And so what you find is people sitting around debating their beliefs that have nothing to do with the science of life. So this is her web. And this is where we find this Moorish coding, now called Masonic coding, in the Bible. Hiram Abiff is the first key given about this web. What, what, what was Hiram Abiff? He was a widow's son. And that widow is also mentioned in the book of Revelations. But it's very brief and implied, nothing heavy. <laughs> uh, the, the, she's still a great secret. <laughs> so we're looking at the circle. I'm not going to draw it as huge and outrageous as I did last week. The circle and the cross. The measure of all things. Everything in the universe is viewed spiritually 
inside of the circumscription of the circle as universe. The circle that has no center and whose circumference is everywhere is the idea that we have of infinity. This infinity is primal cause. It is not God. It is that which causes God to exist. The measure of all things is the circle and the cross, which produces, of course, the square and the compass, the tools of measuring of all things. When Noah built the ark and brought in all the animals two by two, the ram, Aries, the donkey, Libra, the goat, Capricorn, the crab, Cancer, the bull, Taurus, the scorpion, Scorpio, and on and on. Those are all the animals, two by two. And then, Noah barred the door. Noah, wait a minute. Barred the door. That's the circle and the cross. That's the skull and crossbone, which has become an evil thing. The black man who becomes a Jew will go out and point his finger at the European American who says he's a Jew. You ain't no Jew. You the you. <laughs> and they, it ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay, we'll, we'll find out about that, but th this is the concept that's important because we're talking about these are glands. These are the ones that say that they are Jews and are not the 12 major glands in the human body. They have you digging in the earth for your survival. When you add this, then you understand what Jew means. When your glands reach this awakened, vibrant, spiritual state, shining like jewels, then you are a Jew. <laughs> the 12 glands in the body are the 12 mineral stones, precious stones mentioned in the book of Revelation. Those are the real Jews, <laughs> okay? Other than that, you are victim of your own chemistry. The introduction to the system of numbers begins with what is considered to be the most important group of Hebrews in the scripture, the 12 sons of Jacob. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. If you're talking about the stars in this book, there are only 12. Their names are the names of the 12 sons of Jacob. Scriptural symbology is different from other concepts of symbology because in this book, these 12 names of Jacob represent the 12 signs of zodiac. The names that you see on the zodiac are the names of the 30 degrees of space as set down by your ancient ancestors. There were four women, four mothers who produced the 12 sons of Jacob. Leah, Zelpha, Rachel, and who's the other? Billa, right. 
How many phases of the moon are there? Okay. There are 12 signs in the zodiac. How many sons did Jacob have? Very good. I want to I want you to take a look at something interesting here. These are the 12 sons of Jacob. Simon, Judah, Zebulon, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, Benjamin, and who else? Right, yeah, I, I, that was my little trick for the class. <laughs> I put both, because these are twins, the, the two there, yeah. Now, you, okay, you see those and you heard that. Now look at this. What happened to Jacob's name? Very good. Isn't that interesting how all you all know those stories? Twelve tribes of Israel. Look at these names. Manasseh. Okay. Ephraim. These are not the twelve sons of Jacob. These are the twelve constellations of the universe. Remember, true religion is a study of the rules and laws of nature and how nature works and how it interrelates with you, including the salts that build the body, including the working of the moon, how it operates in harmony with the moon and Venus, how it's counted to bring humanity here, how women bring back the old ancestors consciously. Do you understand how we solve earth problems? All right, that's real religion. All the other stuff is dogma, all right? Now, to keep this in mind, I'm not going to write this on here, so write this down. Anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic is like, you know how like you have Ma and, and you have Ma with wings and a moon on their head, stuff like that? That's called anthropomorphic. You know how like um like we for children, they might have Elmo that talks and has eyes and walks up like a person. That's anthropomorphic. Are we clear? Um, like in the Bible when it talks about Jesus, the Son of God, that's anthropomorphic. Or like if you look in, look in the, um, uh, say the book of um, Malachi that closes out the Old Testament, where it tells you the Son of Righteousness arising with uh, healing in his wings and it's spelled S-U-N. That's the Kabbalistic basis of the book. Jesus is actually the Son of God inside. But that's for adults. But for children, the anthropomorphic story is to give them the physical body that they can relate to. But when they grow up, you put away the childless things and you go to the science. That's the difference between religion and dogma. The anthropomorphic truth is what they don't tell people. That way, the revs and the imams and rabbis can keep the adults in a child state and have them buy them nice clothes and a parish and a Lexus too. <laughs>